Hey guys, Richard Older here, and welcome to the channel. We're entering the holiday season, so here's my question. What do you guys want for Christmas? If you're anything like me, the answer is Boost. So let's talk turbos. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add power to any combination. You take a mildly modified motor, you add Boost, and voila! Good things happen. I'm going to show you three different combinations that made over 900 horsepower, but what I want you to get from this video is not what it took to make 900 horsepower from any of these three combinations. I want you to look at it like this. Here's how I can make power with my combination. Take any combination, mildly modified stock, whatever it is, add boost, and good things happen. To illustrate how awesome turbos really are, we're going to take a look at a couple of different combinations and how easy it is to make really big power. In fact, about the same power, but with all kinds of different combinations. So we're going to start out with a modular Ford. This one was actually a four valve O3 Cobra motor. Now we started out by running it NA without the supercharger on it. And this thing had already been upgraded with mild comp extreme energy 262 AH cams, basically the smallest cams that they made for the four valve motor back in the day. And I'll take take a look at that uh, description for the comments, yeah, extreme energy 262 AH cams. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you know what cams we had on there. Otherwise, it would, this was a low compression O3 Cobra motor. We did have a 2001 factory Cobra intake manifold on there. And I think it had an AccuFab throttle body, although this is power level. The stock one was fine. It also had long tube headers. And we ran it with a, a fast XFI management system. But here's what happened after we added our turbo setup. And this was a twin turbo setup from the guys at HP Performance. It had twin 57 millimeter turbos. And these were mounted, I think that this kit actually mounted the turbos up in the, up by the bumper area. And it had a front mounted air to air intercooler on it. We had big injectors. This thing had 65 or 75 pound injectors in it. And here's what happened when we were started uh, running the boost. This was at eight pounds and you could see, you know, it's kind of just gaining power everywhere. Our peak power on our NA motor was 425. Peak torque was 386 or 7 foot-pounds. And peak power at 8 pounds was up to 630 horsepower and 575 foot-pounds. And then we did what all of the turbo things do. We turned the boost up, and this was what the curve looked like at 11 pounds, 734 horsepower. You know, easy peasy, 676 foot-pounds. And here's what happened when we turned it up to 17 pounds. We actually ended up running... A different a bunch of different boost curves in this testing as well as running more than this this thing eventually got up to near a thousand horsepower but even at 17 pounds we were looking at 915 or 16 horsepower peak torque checked in at 844 foot pounds of torque again you can see it's just kind of railroad tracking what i'll do is because it's getting a little busy here let's take a look I'll go ahead and get rid of the torque. We can just look at the horsepower. You can see, you know, NA, boost, more boost, even more boost. And it just kind of keeps going up and up. And it went, like I said, went up to almost a thousand horsepower at the right boost level. But this is what you can expect from a turbo. And you can see we, we could work on maybe getting a little bit more response rate with this thing. But the little modular motors are not terribly torquey. So you have to worry about getting the response rate kind of after they come up on the cam, let's say. And this thing made really good power from about 4,000 or 45, certainly 4,500 all the way out to 6,500. We could put probably smaller turbos on this and get a little bit more response rate, but this thing was really good. Again, over 900 horsepower at 17 pounds on the 4.6 liter. So now let's take a look at a slightly larger 5.3 liter LS. After taking a look at the Ford modular motor, the O3 Cobra motor without the blower and then turbos added to it, it's time to take a look at the LS engine family and also look at another 900 plus horsepower combination. And it's fairly easy to do. This was a 5.3 liter and I've run many of those. This one actually belonged to David Freiberger way back and it featured forged internals, forged rods, and forged dish pistons that so was lower than sta uh, factory static compression ratio. It also had a set of trick flow heads and a Summit Pro LS turbo camshaft and I'll go ahead and put the specs up here and you can take a look at that. We also ran it with a fast intake manifold and run in that manner with long tube headers and a Holly HP management system. The naturally aspirated version of the 5.3 made 448 horsepower and 418 foot-pounds of torque. I think that the compression kind of hurt this thing. There's certainly a lot more power to be had from this, but we will see. 
once we added boost, good things started to happen. So here's what happened when we added our single turbo kit. This was a Summit Racing S475. It was the big T6 S475. It was a T6 version with a 1.32 AR. So it had, you know, we didn't have to worry about back pressure too much. And the, the turbo was capable of certainly supporting a thousand horsepower, especially the big T6 version. Our single turbo kit had a pair of Turbo Smart wastegates. We also had an air to water intercooler run with ambient dyno water through it. This thing was run on E85 and run at about eight and a half pounds, although we had a slightly falling boost curve because we run this with a manual wastegate controller and then not an electronic controller, not the TC1 that we normally use, but it produced 718 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 657 foot pounds at eight and a half pounds. But again, just like with the modular motor, we raised the boost. This is another boost level at 13.4 pounds. When we were up at 844 horsepower, so again, good things happening, 793 foot-pounds. And unlike the modular Ford, this thing would be a bit more responsive down low. Uh, it is a fairly good-sized single turbo, but the NA motor, the 5.3 liter, had more displacement. It had more low-speed power, so it was making more power NA than the, uh, and, and certainly more low-speed torque than the modular motor was. But our final run at 17.1 pounds produced 700 or 923 horsepower and 886 foot-pounds of torque. And again, we had a slightly falling boost curve. So the 17.1 uh, pounds of boost was not at the power peak. It was earlier in the curve and then the boost actually started to fall off. Um, but this was a good combination. Again, easy to make 900 horsepower. That's why turbos work so well and why you should apply them to everything that you have. Obviously the modular motor, this LS, but now let's take a look at what happens when we apply this kind of boost and this kind of boosted goodness to a big block. So our final test to illustrate how awesome turbos are is that we applied them, we applied boost to a big block Chevy. In this case, it was a Gen 6 454. So, you know, your typical kind of wrecking yard 7.4 liter. We did a few modifications to it. We can take a look at that. It was a stock bottom end because this is eventually going to be the big bang motor, but it's a stock bottom end. But we did add a few things to it, including a camshaft which was, this was a custom cam and we were trying to get the motor to make power at a higher engine speed. It was a 561 lift uh, hydraulic roller because the factory uh, 454 Gen 6 motor is a hydraulic roller. It was a 561 lift, 233, 239 at 50 degrees of duration and 118 degree lobe separation angle. We had 1.7 uh, roller rockers on it. They were just cast aluminum inexpensive deals from comp cams. It had a good set of heads on it. They were Dart Oval Port 275s and they were ported by my buddy Andy Mitchell. We had an Edelbrock Victor Jr. 454R EFI intake manifold with a Holley HP management system and a 1000 CFM four hole throttle body. It had 80 pound injectors in it. And we ran this thing naturally aspirated Whoa. to begin with, like we have with all the others. So equipped, we ran it with our dyno long tube headers and a Mazir electric water pump, uh, MSD distributor. This thing made 510 horsepower, but as you can see, it made peak power at 5,800, made peak torque at 5,200, and what we'd like is it to make peak power at 6,500. <laughs> but unfortunately, we haven't been able to get it there yet. But we did run lots of turbo stuff on it, and here's what happened when we added boost. You can see it didn't really take very much boost. This was only 10 pounds. And we ran a single 80 millimeter and S480 Borg Warner turbo. This was actually a T4 version and not the T6 that would be more common. And the one that you would probably would use on, a, on an application like this with a big motor that's already making pretty good power and plenty of low speed torque. But this was a, a, a T4 because it was really originally designed to run on David Freiberger's 5.3 liter. So we did also run a Pro Charger air to water intercooler. We ran dyno water. We ran uh, a seven pound wastegate spring in the twin turbo smart wastegates that we use. And we also had it, added the um, or utilized the TC1 electronic wastegate controller and we were able to adjust the boost even with the seven pound spring. We didn't turn it up very much because we were just trying to find out what was going on here. And what we did as always is we added more boost on this thing. So that was 10 pounds and here is 12.6 pounds. So 
we went from 510 horsepower to 818 horsepower at 10 pounds and then 913 horsepower at 12.6 pounds so you can see this is why turbos are so awesome <laughs> it's so easy to gain power and there's nothing magical about this combination it's a big block from the wrecking yard we put ring gap in it we had a decent set of heads on it but the dart heads by no means are turbo specific heads nor is the camshaft a turbo specific camshaft in fact an argument can be made <clears throat> that the cam that we chose is much more like a positive displacement blower cam which is probably not the choice that I would make if I was running this on the street and we weren't trying to do something very specific. It has a single plane intake. So again, all of this stuff is easy to duplicate and it's really easy to make power with turbos. Get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn from this little venture running three different combinations that made over 900 horsepower? Well, if we look at the small picture, we see that we can certainly exceed 900 horsepower and actually quite a bit more than that, with a modular Ford program, with an LS motor, or with a big block Chevy. But here's the big picture, and here's what I really want you to take away from this video. You can apply this to any combination, not specifically making 900 horsepower, but turbos help add power to any combination. So here's the recipe. Take your motor, whether it's a 2J or a small block Chevy or a 4.3 liter V6, an Atlas, a rotary, it doesn't matter what it is. If you take that motor, make a few minor modifications to it to improve the NA power and then add boost to it, good things are gonna happen. Here's the thing you wanna remember. You need things like octane, you need intercooling, you need the right tune. I always like to have good head studs and maybe ring gap. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Turbos are awesome. More testing coming up.